Hi, I'm Charles Warren. I'm head of product here at Gradle.com. We're going to show you a little demo of what's coming from Gradle.com real soon. First, I want you to imagine that the data of every build run by your team is collected, both on the local boxes and the CI servers from every location, all organized and available to you at Gradle.com. What would that enable you to do? You could quickly solve tough issues that would have taken hours before. Second, you can solve issues that are only solvable with trial and error today. And finally, easily find ways to improve the productivity of your entire engineering team. So we think of this as not just helping developers, but sparking a revolution in how software is designed and built. And for this demo, as all good stories start, it starts in a parking lot. You work for a company in this example called Spin Doctor. We think of it as a Spotify, like web business. You're a developer on the Spin Doctor team. You've been working all day, checking in code, running tests, everything's green lights. So you commit your code and you head to the parking lot, but just as you get to your car, your phone buzzes. You look down and you've got a Slack message from your good friend Jenkins. You know what that means. Turn right back around, head right back into the office, sit at your desk, click through the link, and you see something that looks like this. We've all seen this, right? Not a whole lot you can do from here. Your only friend is the console output. So we click through on the console output and you're confronted with this. A complicated and often incomplete set of information is really the only thing from that CI server you can use. But in the very near future, Gradle is going to come to your aid. So instead of seeing that empty output from Jenkins, you're going to see something like this. There's a plug in here from Gradle right in the middle with a little information about what went wrong. But most importantly, there's a link right there that's going to take you to Gradle.com, where for the first time in history, you're going to be able to look right inside your build in ways that are going to really change the way you develop software. Let's have a look. You click through on that link and bam, you see every build your organization has run. And right there at the top is the uh, famous parking lot fail build that Jenkins ran right there. And below it, you, Hans, is the one that was successful before it. So this is an amazing list. And I'm going to talk more about why this is so important in just a few minutes. But for now, let's, let's check out what's behind that failed build. So when you click in, we see for the first time a really well-organized set of information about what's going on in the project here. In the middle here, you can see the compilation failed, the issue that caused the build to fail. We see some warnings. And if we scroll down, there's tons more information. So you've got the dependency graph here. You've got all the settings that Gradle was using to run the build. And you can even see some details about the state of the hardware that that build was running on the CI server. But let's scroll back up. I want to show you what's probably the most amazing thing. What Gradle.com is doing here in the second row you see this green successful build, that was your build, is being compared with the Spin Doctor build that you're looking at for this receipt. And Gradle is telling you that the JDK has changed from 1.8 to 1.6. This would, for, a, for an experienced Java developer, you might be able to figure this out in five or 10 minutes, but in this case, you've solved it in seconds. But being a good developer, you're not gonna stop there. Let's go have a peek into the stack trace. So you scroll down to the stack trace, pop it open, and in this case, we've hidden everything but the issues here. And you can see they're all related to Java 8 and the, the Neo classes that came out recently. But you're not going to stop there. Let's, let's now go back up to our list and check out the build that you ran that was successful. Right at the bottom, it shows you that you, in fact, yep, running Java 1.8. Problem solved, easy fix. You recommit with the understanding that your CI build is going to run fine and you can get home for dinner on time. Let's look at an example where the only thing that you could do is trial and error to fix a problem like this. So we go back up to the list and let's check out this Jenkins build right at the bottom here that also failed. So we click through and immediately we can see what the problem is. 
there's a dynamic dependency issue. You can see it because two other recent local builds were successful. And it was commons lang that got updated probably between the time that these builds ran and Jenkins ran, it got updated and caused the issue here. Very easy to fix in seconds, but without Gradle.com, this would have been a miserable trial and error process to figure out what went wrong. Now you can solve it instantly. This is giving you a bunch of tools that makes continuous integration a lot easier to keep running and keep stable. What about local builds? What can Gradle.com do to help you in that situation? Let's have a look. Let's click over to our console, click through, run a build, and bam, it fails. But in this case, at the bottom, we give you a link, just like we did in the widget in Jenkins, back to Gradle.com, so you can immediately click through and see what went wrong. In this case, you can see that this tar file failed, to, but Here's a little message, solution available at discuss.gradle.org. So when you click through immediately, you can see it was a version issue when Gradle upgraded in good old Ant. Ant 1.9.4 introduced a, a regression that uh, we sort of pass along through Gradle. And right here is a, a little code snippet you can use to fix this. Again, this might take a really, really long time to sort out, as some issue, issues do because there is no information out there because it has something to do with something going on inside your own company. And for that situation, every section of a build receipt and the entire build receipt itself is shareable out to public communities like the Gradle forums or Stack Overflow, but also to your internal tools like Slack, Jira, and HipChat. So you can get help when you need it from the people who understand what's going on. Let's go and look at some examples of continuous set of builds being updated as they run in your company can help you. So here, here they're all running. This is data that heretofore in history hasn't been collected. So this is kind of an unprecedented set of information about the health of your engineering organization. And as you watch these builds run, you see something interesting. You start to see that the Bangalore team's builds are running much, much more slowly than the teams in in other locations. Let's go ahead and sort this list by geo. And when we do that, we see that the folks over in Bangalore are experiencing much, much more slow build times than the rest of the world and taking a huge productivity hit because of it. Let's see if we can confirm our hunch. Let's sort by build time. And sure enough, all the Bangalore builds, Priya's, Raj's builds, are all running very slowly compared to everyone else. So it looks like a great opportunity to go ahead and drop an artifactory mirror server in the Bangalore office, a reasonably inexpensive fix to a huge productivity opportunity. By using this simple list, you can start to see problems and improve the productivity of everybody in your engineering organization. So that's four examples that if we recap, we enable you to solve really hard problems quickly with organized build data. And second, solve impossible problems by comparing builds. And finally, use the build output to spot trends that will enable you to improve productivity. Go ahead, sign up at gradle.com, and here's to a revolution in the way software gets made. Thank you.